alcoholics, by which I mean I only smoke weed. But uh, the, it, it's very hard. It's very hard in this country to to find out you're an alcoholic because the, the standards not that fucking high. Is anybody here not from Ireland? And where are you from? Polish. You're Polish. Yeah. That's fucking the Irish at this <laughs> time. The um. Another thing you have to do when you're, in when you're in recovery is find a higher power, you know, like God or whatever. And, and I, I could never, and for a while mine was Superman, that was all I could hope. <laughs> you know, they say never make yourself your higher power, and you can't make yourself your own higher power, and you can't really, I, I don't believe in God, so I had to find somewhere in between, and I decided my higher power is actually my 57 year old self in the future. <laughs> uh, he's quite a cool, relaxed dude, you know that way, lots of advice, he seems to know what he's doing. But if I ever live to drink again, basically that 57 year old guy is going to be lying in a gutter somewhere wearing the underpants I have on me today. <laughs> I just watch you, because you know, you know, the drunks you see on the streets, the kind of, the angry ones. Um, you, you often see them walking down the street on their own and they're kind of screaming at the odd person that walks by, you know, just to kind of... Bleh, bleh. Now, I've been there, right? And what happens is, sometimes you scream at the wrong person. 99% of people just go fucking drunk and walk by, but you get the odd guy that goes, No, I'm going to have it out with this fucker. <laughs> and this is something that alcoholics do. If You have this moment of sobriety that lasts like a blip of a second just long enough to tell you that you're after getting yourself into trouble and you need to back out with this as quickly as possible and then you don't remember what happens for the rest of the day till you get up the following morning but it, it was just but that whole thing of and, and if somebody stands up to them they kind of go I was standing outside another pub on the keys recently and there was one of these guys walking down the road and he was doing the whole and anyone walking by when I looked the other direction, there was another one, and they were walking <laughs> towards me. I said, fuck it, I'll wait on the next bus. <laughs> <laughs> the next bus wasn't for a while, so basically, I, I, just, I just watched 20 minutes of just... <laughs> they didn't know how to end it. <laughs> it's probably still going. So, uh, does anybody here ever fly Ryanair? Yeah, yeah I, I've been using it for the last five years and I find it a very efficient service and cost effective so there's no material there whatsoever to go back to that. <laughs> now I know a lot of people feel uncomfortable around ex-drinkers, especially alcoholics. <laughs> They're not as bad as fucking ex-smokers, I'll tell you that. But you know it, you know I'm an ex-smoker. Actually, I just want to test something. <laughs> That's fucking weird. Normally you get you hear a cough somewhere within the first five seconds, even though you haven't lit. There's always one fucker down the back. <coughs> <laughs> you light up at the bus stop, you know, the fucker sitting at the other end of the bench. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always ex-smokers. Now, could you imagine me as an ex-drinker, walking into a pub, going up to someone having a pint at the bar, just going up to them and going, <laughs> Piss myself for effect. <laughs> See how long you last in society. I miss smoking. I could smoke when I started doing this on the stage. I, especially in the fucking buses. I, I, I hate not being able to smoke in the bus upstairs anymore because that's when you need it most. You know what I mean? Fuck passive smoking. Do you know what I hate being subject to on buses? Passive fucking child rearing. <laughs> Thanks, gentlemen. I've been Robbie Bond.